Hi, everyone, and welcome to the AIHM Wellness Webinar. This is our first um, Friday Wellness Webinar of our series, and we've started a weekly series where every Monday morning we start out together as a community and um, with, a, with some sort of meditation or visualization, and then every Friday, uh, we end our week as well as an integrative community. Um, and today we have the pleasure of having Dr. Mimi Guarneri here with us. Um, and she is calling in from her integrative center, Pacific Pearl La Jolla in California. And we're going to get a chance to just hear from Mimi and as a community come together and share, um, kind of talk about how we're all dealing with this crisis, how Mimi and her center are dealing with it, and then how we as a community can really help support one another. So Mimi, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Tabitha, and thank you, Jessica, and the team for getting us uh, up and running. Uh, I see that we already have 80 plus people checked in, and I'm thrilled to be able to spend some time today, uh, hopefully just having an open discussion about um, how we're all doing and uh, what we can do both to support ourselves physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, uh, so that we can uh, get through all of this together. And I was uh, thinking about next Friday, actually, at this time, it will be what's called Global Love Day. I didn't know we had a Global Love Day. And of course, you know, at the Academy, we truly believe love is the greatest healer. And uh, in preparation for uh, Global Love Day, I thought I would read something uh, about unconditional love. And uh, to me, when I read it, it really just helped to settle me down and anchor me into a peaceful space, uh, which is where I think we all need to go periodically now. Uh, it's very, um, it's a trying time. And it's a trying time, no matter how much resiliency we all have. And um, I'm hoping that us coming together in our community, in our community of love, uh, helps us uh, from a resiliency standpoint. Um, and many of you know, I believe uh, that the I in illness is truly isolation and the W-E in wellness is we. So um, I think we have a, a nice group on and I'd just like to share with you uh, something that I read today uh, that I think really speaks to our philosophy of the Academy. It says, we are one humanity on this planet. All life is interconnected and interdependent. All share in the universal bond of love. Love begins with self-acceptance and forgiveness. With respect and compassion, we embrace diversity. Together we make a difference through love. Love and peace begins with me. And then it goes on to say that especially during this worldwide pandemic, let us embrace our global family in the spirit of love, compassion, and kindness. I think for those of us in healthcare and those of us that are healthcare uh, providers on any level, doctor, nurse, acupuncturist, chiropractor, pharmacist, every one of us, uh, really have to practice self-acceptance and forgiveness, especially when we feel like maybe we're not doing as much as we possibly can do at this time. Uh, I want everyone to know that we're all working and doing our best. And uh, I'm so thrilled uh, to see people from Brazil checking in uh, to the webinar um, this is just terrific. And uh, from all over the country, 
So I'd like to open it up for questions and for sharing uh, and just sticking with this concept of how can we continue to work our way through this on all these levels, body, mind, emotion, spirit. And I'm happy to discuss practical things like what's happening here at Pacific Pearl. Uh, how are we holding it together? What are we doing? Uh, whatever the group would like, would like to discuss. Tabby? Tabby, unmute. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so if people would like to put their questions in the Q&A, um, then we can read them out and um, start with that. Uh, that's better than putting them in the chat. So there's a Q&A function if you're able to do that. Um, Mimi, I just thought it, it would be great to start out with um, talking about how you and your staff are really dealing with the balance right now of um, not only kind of work-life balance, but just the crisis balance. And also, you know, how every day it seems like there are more things in the news that are absolutely unacceptable from a medical health community perspective and, and how, how you all are, are managing that. Yeah, well, just in going back to the opening prayer, I just want to say that I firmly believe that this entire crisis is also a crisis of consciousness. And that our, our job and our role is to come to the highest level of consciousness that we possibly can uh, to, be, to be the light during this time of challenge. And for some of us, that means different things. Uh, so the the first thing that was important for Rowney as the administrator of our, our center here in La Jolla, and for me as well, was how can we keep everyone healthy and how can we keep everyone employed? Um, we're really uh, very concerned about the unemployment and um, the food lines lining up. And, you know, most Americans do live from paycheck to paycheck. And uh, we, we um, went as far as to ask our doctors, our clinicians, to give up one day or two day of their salary uh, so that, you know, because our doors have basically been closed for a month and we'll talk about what that means and how we're slowly phasing things in with telemedicine. Um, so how do we keep our staff going? So that's, that was our first thing is we, um, we, we really put into place a system that hopefully keeps everyone employed. The other thing, uh, we have been very disillusioned, and I'm sorry to say this, with uh, promises of our government <laughs> of small business loans and uh, payroll protection. And, and as an American, it's been disillusioned to me that we have no safety nets for the people in this country. It really is painful to watch. And I feel like, well, I'm one of the blessed ones. I'm sitting here in La Jolla in my nice office and all of that. But uh, uh, excruciatingly, excruciating to me to watch uh, how difficult this is for many, many people. Uh, so we locked our doors as we were instructed by Governor Newsom in mid-March. Um, mid we converted to telemedicine very quickly. Uh, we tried to get as many appointments as we could online. We are fortunate that we're a membership practice, so we have some money in the kitty from people paying for memberships. And uh, we now have a policy where we screen people before they come in, temperature checks at the door, everyone in face masks, and so on. So that's what we've been doing. Uh, I see some questions, Tabby, and I, I really like what I'm seeing. Someone's asking a great question about what we can do for the profound fatigue. Well, it looks like we're going to go right into the practical <laughs> aspects. Yeah. Uh, what we can do for the profound fatigue for patients post-acute phase of COVID in terms of supplements. Let me tell you what we've been doing at the Pearl. Anyone 
who has any respiratory thing happening from shortness of breath uh, to fatigue, I'm strongly recommending starting the adaptogen rhodiola. Rhodiola, which comes from the high Himalayas, uh, is really the adaptogen we turn to for people with altitude sickness. Uh, so I'm recommending uh, rhodiola absolutely uh, for my patients. I am recommending for, for uh, we have protocols for prevention, viral prevention, and we created a product called Viral Shield, which has things like quercetin, uh, astragalus, uh, mushrooms, so the My Community Immune Support, um, andrographis, quercetin. I think these all have good research to support supporting the immune system. Uh, adaptogens, uh, particularly rhodiola, uh, and of course, if someone has muscle fatigue, I would recommend aminos and uh, CoQ10 as well. Uh, so there are protocols that we can follow, and um, we put together a, uh, a formula as well as using formulas that are already on the market. Uh, I have to say that our naturopathic doctors at the Pearl have really stepped up and uh, have taken pure herbal tinctures that we have been using for acute COVID symptoms, and I am nothing but impressed. And uh, we are going to start publishing these case reports uh, where we have some tinctures of pure herbal medicine uh, that was starting right away for cough, as well as for antiviral. And Tabby, of course, you know this from the naturopathic world, uh, mm -hmm. this could be powerful medicine. Yeah, it's really important for all of you out there um, as you are seeing patients. Um, you know, One of the tools we have now that Dr. Ryan Bradley um, introduced last week was there is a traditional complementary and integrative medicine registry now where you can actually enter um, your case studies, and this is happening globally. So we're really trying to collect um, as much as we can uh, so that we can track this and create that evidence base um, for COVID specifically. Yeah, and we're, we're part of that as well. And I think Ryan Bradley is doing a great job with that. And everyone should go and check that out at NCNM and uh, see if you can get your patients entered into that registry, because that will lead to publications which lead to information. Uh, and um, next time something comes around, we'll be a little bit more prepared. Uh, Patty Christie's asking a great question, and I think it's really important. Her question is, how can we reach out to people suffering uh, without physical touch? Uh, people are anxious when someone approaches them without a mask and so on. Um, and so uh, I think, uh, when I walk, I always have a face mask. And if I'm not around people, I'll take it off, of course. Uh, but I think waving to people and just saying hi, uh, even when I'm sitting outside in front of my house, I'll wave and say hi to people. Uh, I think um, for those who have some time to do a volunteer job would be great if you can help like deliver Meals on Wheels to the elderly. Uh, what people are doing is they're delivering the food, ringing the bell, stepping back a few feet, and just talking to the person and making that social contact. Uh, so delivering groceries, um, bringing people out in a, um, uh, in a neighborhood, almost block party, where everybody's just in front of their house, you know, that you don't have to be close, but you can be in front of your house and you can connect and, uh, if you have a musician on the block, it's always great. Uh, we, I did my walk the other night in La Jolla, and they were having a, um, a guy was outside playing an accordion, and everyone was out listening to it. And of course, everyone's learning about that from Italy and other places in Europe. Uh, so I think, I think that's wonderful as well. Uh, and technology for people that are... Um, are you know in, uh, locked in somewhere where we can do FaceTime with uh, people who can't come out uh, and so on. So if there's some way you can help a neighbor, 
I think that's the most important thing. If you have an elderly neighbor, just to ring the bell and step back and say, do you need anything? Can I get you anything? Uh, I think that's really important. Did you want to add anything there, Tabby? I just saw you popped on or no? Um, yeah, I just, I think that um, Patty also asked a question around, um, you know, people feeling anxious as other people are approaching um, that may or may not be wearing masks um, just during daily walks. Because for many of us, you know, that has become our really main source of exercise is neighborhood walking, right? Um, most in many parts of the country, at least um, in the United States, I'm not sure how other areas in the world, um, if this is the same, but any of you who are on from different countries, if you could let us know if you're also restricted to, um, you know, where you can go outside, but uh, at least in California, most of the parks and the uh, beaches are all closed. And so the neighborhood walking has kind of become a thing. I mean, every morning I can hear lots of people outside, all the neighbors um, walk all the time now. It's been interesting too to just, um, I feel like that sense of community um, in this day and age, a lot of us don't even know our neighbors. And it really has um, been interesting to just see that activity that is um, very steady and regular. Um, but at the same time, I've also had that experience where someone has seen me and then starts to approach. So like, what do we do? What's a good way? Um, if anyone has techniques of what they've done um, when that's happened, uh, I just kind of tend to stop myself. Um, and then if someone continues to approach, just kind of slowly back up a little bit so that, you know, it's not so um, obtrusive, but um, in, in those cases, it's been fine. And we've found that at least in our neighborhood, um, people are really trying to respect that social distancing. Um, I'm sure, you know, my, many of us have seen news clips where that's not happening, right? And so, um, you know, just trying as much as possible to um, just emulate that yourself, I think is, is the best technique we've found. You know, uh, I had a, I had a very um, kind of sad experience. I was walking and I had my face mask on and uh, two kids on bicycles with the dad were heading in my direction and they pulled off to the side and the little one said to dad, dad, anxious, is that six feet? Were we six feet? And I think it's so important to talk to kids, too. I noticed Sesame Street is about to launch a whole thing on, um, you know, COVID for parents and children. And I'm just hoping that it's, uh, it's going to be good because it's very, very frightening for kids. And Tabby, you mentioned little Luna waking you up, saying, I don't want to live in a world with COVID-19. I mean... So I think we also have to, um, you know, do go extra to to be uh, connected to the children and to talk to them and wave at them and maybe we should be wearing funny face masks, you know, instead of serious medical face masks. So I will. I would like to say two things. Um, first <laughs> of all, just a few comments um, from uh, the chat. So. Um, Nina Stark says that downtown here in San Diego, there's a nightly shout out at 8 p.m. and people come outdoors and balconies and hoot and holler, bang pans and play music. Cars honk and even the fire department drives by with their sirens. It's very festive. So, you know, starting something like that in your community is just also a way to bring some lightness. Um, Molly and Bruce from Spain say that they're actually only allowed to go outside to go to the store, the pharmacy, or to throw out trash or walk a dog. There's no exercise or other outside activities permitted. Um, and then I, I do want to uh, show you all a picture. I have to pull it up here, but um, one of the things that, you know, with having kids and really trying to think of ways and tools and techniques to keep things light and, and think about how we can look at the positive side of things and not just, um, you know, the, the stress that this is causing, but really trying to find ways to do that. So in California, some of you may have seen this or not, but there are new um, 
relatively newer types of snorkeling masks. And so they're full face masks. And this is a picture of my husband who has one on and has decided that he's gonna start wearing these to the grocery store and on his walks. And we have some um, that are kid sizes. So they're all excited about wearing these big snorkel masks. Um, and it just caused a lot of fun in our house. Um, I think the other thing that we've used as a technique is, and, and this is something I think that is one of those unexpected gifts, right? I think every, for every negative, there's an opposite positive. And one of the, I think, I believe one of the gifts of COVID yeah. is that the impact, the positive impact on our environment has actually been noted all over the world. Rivers yeah. becoming clean, animals appearing on, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge had, I think, coyotes or, you know, all of a sudden the natural world has actually had a pause and, and the ability to breathe. And so we've actually talked about that a lot with the kids and they've talked about examples of where they've seen that. They're now in um, online classes. So they're exposed to a lot of what's happening as well that way. And that's been a really, positive shift for the kids to really think about that um, rather than focus on like, oh my God, did someone get too close to me? Or, you know, those things that do bring a lot of panic and anxiety for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so there's a couple of practical questions here and I don't want to ignore them. Uh, hi, Lori, I see, see you're on there. And um, also I know Tabby in the chat room, you have people that are checking in from what Colombia is doing and Molly's been mentioning what Spain is doing and I think it's all great. Uh, Lori, I've been doing antibody testing here at Pacific Pearl. We're using a company called Vibrant Health and it tests for four different uh, epitopes, uh, the nuclear protein, two domains and the M spike, which everybody's been hearing a lot about. Uh, it gives IgM and IgG, and I've been very impressed with how it's correlating clinically. What do I mean by that? Just like in your question, your daughter was seeing people who had really awful uh, illnesses in December, in January, uh, even in February. Our own uh, Mark Kalina, our internist here in December, was so sick to the point of hallucinating, literally, uh, with high fevers. And uh, we've had families traveling together. Long story short, is it all turns out those people had COVID. So we know for sure we had COVID here in San Diego in um, December for sure. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Uh, the fact that your daughter tested positive for influenza A, well, it could be influenza A, but boy, those symptoms you have written down and described, yeah, they can be influenza or they can be, um, they can be COVID. So she's welcome to come to our center if she'd like to have antibody testing. It would be nice to know if she has IgG. Uh, it doesn't tell us exactly how long the immunity is good for, it doesn't tell us the strength of the immunity, but quite frankly, it would be nice to know that anyone in healthcare or anyone walk, if they have IgG, it just, you still can't let your guard down, but it's nice to know you have some immunity. Uh, and we have uh, Dr. Kalina who has IgG in all four epitopes, and um, we're using him as our un upfront guy. If somebody comes in or calls, we're seeing people that we really think have active COVID, we're seeing them outside in front of our center, not in the center. And um, I know I have him as someone who can be our front line uh, because he does have some immunity. So I think it'd be good for her to know. And these people can also go and then give their blood and um, they can be uh, immunoglobulin donors. And the research is looking like the immunoglobulins actually work. So, uh, and that makes total sense to me, buys time uh, for people's body to heal. So again, I think another good reason to know. Uh, and then I see um, an another question about um, how does a healer heal under this stressful situation? And I think that that's really, really important. 
um, you know, uh, I learned from Rowney King a long time ago that before I get out of bed in the morning, I open my seven central chakras. And um, the way to do that is to work on from the first chakra to the crown chakra and just gently holding one's hands over the first and second, second and third, third and fourth, fifth and sixth, and then and do, do each chakra position for about three minutes. And that really helps to balance the energy system. The other thing I learned from my healing touch training is to learn how to root oneself into the earth, right? Where you imagine that you have roots literally coming from your, the big chakras in the bottom of your feet going down into mother earth and anchoring oneself in. Uh, when this first happened, I was spending more time outside of my body than inside of my body. And I realized, oh my God, I'm not grounded. I'm not connected. And so I started to do my, my practice of uh, opening chakras in the morning and putting those roots down into the ground. Uh, remembering to breathe. I mean, that's really fundamentally important. I mean, to be able to breathe four seconds in, seven seconds out, puts the body into a state of relaxation. Uh, the other things I've been doing is uh, avoiding excess caffeine. Uh, no need for that. Um, I have been giving myself IV nutrient infusions uh, because that's a uh, because I firmly believe in them. I've been doing my TM meditation uh, twice a day, and my spiritual teacher in India has provided us with a mantra uh, of protection. And if anyone's interested in that, I'd be happy to share that at some point. Uh, you, it's basically just a, you know, mantra is a sacred word and it's a chant. Uh, for protection, but you have to remember too, when you chant, you connect to your body. Uh, when you meditate, you connect uh, to your deeper purpose. So I find all of these things uh, help me uh, when it comes to staying uh, focused and staying grounded. A sleep, fundamentally important. The first couple of nights when this all started and I was trying to figure out what are we going to do with our business? What are we going to do with keeping our patients safe, our staff? You know, I, I start and, I, and I'm a good sleeper and I started to find myself falling off a little there. And I actually started to use some long acting melatonin for a few nights. And then once I sort of got myself back to grounded and doing my spiritual, my meditative practice, not letting that go, eating well, uh, every, I feel great. So uh, those are some of the things that, and connect with your friends. You know, we've been sending jokes around, but even though we're sending jokes, jokes are a way, it's like if I send Tabby a joke, it's, it's like my saying, I love you. I'm thinking about you. I want you to laugh. Right. And, you know, like one of my colleagues said, well, I don't find jokes funny. I said, OK, so I won't send them to you. And then when everybody else was laughing, he came back to me and said, why am I not getting the jokes? And I said, well, you didn't want them. And uh, so now he wants them. He said I was in a bad mood. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this, so connecting with each other like we're doing right now, I think, is really important because laughter is the best medicine. I mean, and, and for those of you who have not seen uh, I can't do anything political, but all I'm going to say is there's a great song to the tune of the Lion King's uh, The Lion Sleeps Tonight. And it's absolutely hysterical, but I can't get into politics, so I'll move on. I have another practical question, which is, uh, can I go with the recommendations for GI symptoms, diarrhea, nausea, abdominal pain? Uh, definitely. Uh, I have found that the diarrhea turns off pretty nicely with VSL number three. That's my go-to diarrhea probiotic. Um, I take people off of pro-inflammatory foods, uh, no dairy because dairy is mucus producing immediately off of dairy. Um, and I get them on a um, vegetable broth 
uh, and um, electrolytes, and I have them either make electrolytes or I have them use a Pedialyte that doesn't have sugar in it. Uh, that's sort of the direction that I go. And then I'm using the antivirals uh, as well. And most people, uh, if they're having abdominal discomfort, you might prefer to do some of the antivirals in uh, a liquid liquid formula, which would be like liquid pure tincture of astragalus uh, to help support the immune system. Uh, some of the uh, new, some of the immune boosting mushrooms uh, also come in liquid form and in spray form, so that people aren't taking a ton ton of pills in. Uh, but definitely the BSL number three acupuncture, acupuncture, acupuncture. If you have someone who can do that helps the nausea, helps the abdominal pain. Uh, and then of course, uh, you know, trying to keep people hydrated is fundamentally important. That's where you use your electrolytes. And when I'm desperate, I'll be honest. I mean, we all have to reach for something. If I have someone who's having bad diarrhea and they don't have Pedialyte, I'll say drink Gatorade or send someone to the local pharmacy and buy liquid IV hydration, you know, uh, because if we can keep up with the fluids, uh, we're gonna be ahead of the game. Nausea responds to acupuncture, responds to ginger tea, slowly sipped throughout the day. It responds to acupressure points. Uh, so um, that's the direction I tend to go there uh, for um, people having the abdominal issues, mainly keeping them hydrated. That's most important. And then uh, Cynthia had a question about quercetin. Uh, if someone's on Lipitor or Zocor, uh, between, concerned about the drug interactions. I have to be honest, Cynthia, I've used a lot of quercetin. I love quercetin. It's anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's like nature's antihistamine. It's nature's claritin plus. I've never seen an interaction with Lipitor or Zocor. And um, all my patients are on a statin or Reggie's rice or something like that. Uh, so, but I, I feel comfortable with 250 twice a day if you don't want to go to uh, the, the, higher, um, the higher doses. Uh, so I think that that's important. And then someone had a question about IV vitamin C. Uh, I have been using IV vitamin C. Uh, we have been giving up to 10 grams a day. Uh, the reason I use 10 grams as the cutoff is because um, I don't, if I don't know someone's glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase status, uh, then I'll uh, stop at, we'll stop at 10 grams. Uh, so uh, maybe somebody can uh, answer about a shared portal. Uh, about uh, case studies and outcomes. There is some research coming out of uh, Europe in particular, and they're using vitamin C in New York uh, on a research protocol. And this is my feeling about vitamin C. If, if someone has glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, you can't give them super high doses. If they don't, the worst that's going to happen is they're going to urinate it out and put it in the toilet. I mean, so it's a diuretic, uh, as you all know. So I, I, I'm not so fearful of vitamin C in general. Anything you wanted to add there, Tabby? Or should I just keep going with these really good questions? Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think- I want to look at the chat room and see what's happening there, because I can't see that. Yeah, exactly. Um, just a few uh, comments I'll share from the chat room. Um, someone uh, texting in from uh, the country of Colombia says that they are similarly like Spain. They can really not go out for any exercise, only, you know, really essential, essential needs like the pharmacy and whatnot. Um, and uh, just a few other things that um, Bob Roth is holding a daily meditation time. Um, as well as other, um, David Lynch Foundation uh, has a Heal the Healer program. There's lots and lots of different resources um, right now that are free online just to help us stay um, balanced and calm. And I think, Mimi, just to some of the comments you said earlier, 
it's really about us not forgetting what we already know. And in the chaos, the increased level, I think, and you know, for those of us who are sensitive to energy, which many of us in this integrative community are, um, that can feel challenging at times. And so it's just really reminding ourselves and really sticking to that daily schedule of, yes, I'm gonna take this time to do my mantras or my meditation or breathe or whatever it might be. Um, and the other comment that I think all of us, um, you know, have struggled with, but is a really great comment from Molly and, and um, Bruce in Spain is really limiting your time that you allow yourself to look at the news. Absolutely. I mean, the news is just, it's so much drama and spin. And while it's important that we get the information so we know what's happening, there is a point where the accessing of it just physically creates anxiety and stress there's you know so really staying on yourself about that talking to your family you know really coming together as a family and saying out loud consciously let's not do this you know let's really make sure we're not accessing news four hours a day or whatever it might be or have it online all all day long i mean i think a lot of people have been struggling with this so um molly that's a great great suggestion uh, i you know what i've been doing is in the morning i read the john hopkins newsletter update i think medically it's actually excellent and uh, it gives news from all over the world and you can subscribe to it and there's no fee to it and it's not it's just right there it's up front it's not conspiracy theory news and uh, it's not but uh, I find it very helpful from a research, at least this is what's going on, this is the research, this is the direction. I find that Johns Hopkins newsletter uh, very good in the morning. Uh, I do want to mention, and not forget Tabby, going back to the question about um, healing oneself, um, I'd love it if you would send out to the group you know, every Saturday morning we have Hari Das, also known as Mimi Trotta, um, our wonderful, wonderful Kundalini yoga instructor, uh, doing live Kundalini yoga, 10 o'clock Pacific Pearl time, uh, with uh, Pacific Standard Time at Pacific, Pacific Pearl. And it's only $12 a class. And um, you can have five people in your living room doing it. Uh, so uh, you can split, split the $12 five ways or however many ways you want. What I love about Kundalini Yoga is it works the body's biofield. Uh, so you're really, it's a form of energy medicine. So not only do you get the movement of your body, but you also get to do pranayama, which is all the breathing exercises and meditation. And it is powerful, powerful medicine. So uh, I love the, I would love for you to join us for Kundalini Yoga on um, Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard. And then also we're doing uh, free daily affirmations for everyone, uh, you know, so finding things uh, that we can do. So we start the morning with uh, Rowney's doing an affirmation every morning that you can sign up for, cost you nothing, daily word, which costs you a little bit of money, has some beautiful uh, morning sayings. Uh, so it's a matter of looking at your day and saying, okay, I call it my creativity projects. Uh, what are my creativity projects going to be? Uh, last weekend, it was fixing a fountain, uh, uh, putting lights up on a tree, uh, you know, just doing things that um, uh, really uh, give, get you outside if you can and uh, just being creative and it's whatever it is that you can do whether you like painting or doing coloring books um, for art or something learning a new language uh, it's a great time to learn a new language I, I went on I have a Babbel account now so I'm trying to learn Italian and Spanish you know I have to be an overachiever so therefore I'm succeeding at neither and uh, <laughs> but there are these are the things that we can do um i see a question at the bottom tabby but i i can't quite let me see oh there we go okay 
What would you recommend to prevent COVID? Okay, so uh, Eric, here's what I would suggest. Um, and this is not personalized. I would recommend vitamin C, two to three grams a day. I would recommend uh, our viral shield formula. If you can get it, you can call us and get it. I'm not trying to sell you something, but um, it has a lot of the things I'm gonna recommend, which is, uh, you can use andrographis 500 twice a day. Uh, astralagus, you can get uh, two, two tablets three times a day. Uh, and you can mix that with uh, immune support, my community immune support, either the daily immune support or the, um, or you can mix it with the, uh, my community, they have a daily or a, um, a, a formula that's um, uh, more, more robust. So, or you can do the stem at seven. Again, I have no proprietary financial interest in any of the mushroom stuff, but uh, it's all excellent. So I would say if you can get a complement of my community immune support in some form, whether it's stem at seven or daily immune, one of those, and then add some astralagus or andrographis, quercetin, uh, and vitamin C, I think you're covering a lot of the basis that Mary Hardy talked about on the, on the, on the, on the a wonderful seminar that she did for the Academy. Uh, those are important ones. And I don't know if people have access to that still. Yeah, time. so um, we're yeah. actually going to be um, next Friday. Uh, the guest speaker will be Mary Hardy, and it will be specifically um, around uh, the clinical aspects. Uh, she's going to be going through and doing a more robust presentation. Um, she had done a shortened presentation um, on the AIHM Town Hall a couple Saturdays ago. And so um, I highly recommend that you guys come to that. And those of you who are posting specific questions about um, clinical recommendations or literature um, that you've read, um, everything is changing so quickly. So she's actually working right now on updating all of that um, so that we can have a real time clinical discussion next week, next Friday, the same time. Right. Great. Uh, and uh, so there are lots of things. And again, for anyone with uh, shortness of breath symptoms, I would strongly recommend, uh, and for early infection, uh, adding rhodiola to the regimen. This is what we've been doing. And I have to say, um, we're doing quite well. So I look forward to getting our uh, case reports done. It's just a matter of trying to do everything at once. I'd also say that um, for those of you who are AIHM members, um, in our platform now, we've started a COVID, dis COVID discussion group that Mary Hardy is monitoring and kind of mo moderating. So if you have very specific questions, clinical questions, that is a closed platform. Um, you know, you can go in to your, log into your account and then just post the question in the group and we all can have a, you know, offline discussion. Okay. So we got that started um, this week. It was a request from the, from the town hall. So we're excited about that. Great. You know, uh, I have a question about someone having a baby. They have a one month old baby and are staying away from the family. Uh, at what point is it safe for parents and family to hold him? Uh, you know, this is why I think, um, you know, no one's been sick, right? That's what they're saying. No one's sick. Everyone's been socially isolated. You can even get tested. So people can get tested. Uh, you can go and get a PCR test. I mean, I do PCR testing here. I send them off to LabCorp. It takes a few days to come back. You can get a good antibody test. I'm not convinced yet of um, not convinced yet of the finger prick. I think you need to know what points it's actually testing for. Uh, but if somebody's really been socially isolated, uh, there's a good chance that uh, they don't have the virus, and uh, no guarantee. Uh, but I hate to see them not be able to hold the baby. Uh, or at least see the baby and maybe, um, and so it's, it is gonna change. They're asking is it's gonna change over the next six months? It absolutely will. You know, the early Chinese literature uh, research showed that this virus dies in heat, 
And I know, well, in the early, when I first said this a month ago, people said, how do you know this? You know, it's, but now the research is showing this virus does die in heat and uh, it does die with ultraviolet light. I am hopeful that as, uh, as uh, the temperatures warm up, uh, that we're going to see less of this. And then we have to deal with Patty Christie's question, which is what happens in the fall. And I think uh, we don't know what happens in the fall. We just have to take all the precautions we can right now to, uh, to hopefully lessen the fall's burden uh, and get everyone tested. We need to know who's immune. We need to know who's carrying virus asymptomatically. This has been a big failing of our public health system. And it is very frustrating, which is why we can't be holding babies and spending time, you know, uh, feeling safe uh, with loved ones uh, that we're not living with on a daily basis. I mean, I had a couple of questions. Um, one, um, there are a couple of people in the chat asked about what exact antibody tests you are doing or like what yeah. companies do you know of that are reasonable? Right. Um, and then I also had a testing question as well, maybe once you answer that one. Yeah, so um, I, I mentioned earlier, we're using Vibrant Health. We're part of a research study. Uh, Vibrant is looking at four, uh, four different regions of the COVID-19. Now, will it pick up a um, different kind of uh, coronavirus? Possibly. Uh, but again, I was saying that uh, the testing is correlating with people's clinical history. Uh, so that's the test that we're using. Uh, LabCorp, we have LabCorp for PCR testing. That's a nasal pharyngeal swab. Uh, and that's what we're using for, uh, we tried to get an Abbott machine, but they're limited and we could not get one. So we're using LabCorp for PCR testing and we're using Vibrant Health, uh, Vibrant, somebody's asking, B-I-B-R-A-N-T, T is in Tom, for antibody testing. And you can go and check out their website. Somebody else is asking, how can we connect for uh, Kundalini, they're another firm Kundalini, uh, a Kundalini fan, uh, Barbara. So uh, if you can go to, um, uh, I, I, I'm not even sure if it's on our Pacific Pearl La Jolla website, but maybe Tabby, you can send the invite out to the group. Is that possible? We can, we can look for it right now and I've seen it. So let me see if I can find the link and put it in and there. Just, and if not, it goes out on our constant contact, but if people aren't on our constant contact, they won't be able to see it. So that would be great. Yeah, and, and, and just to um, also answer um, Sally Redfern's question, she said it would be helpful if AIHM could compile a list of free resources that are supportive um, that you list and others add for support at the time for us and our patients. Um, so this is partly what the um, online in the AIHM member area, the COVID kind of discussion group is actually for, is to start to compile those. We also on our website, um, if you go to um, AIHM.org slash COVID, we have resources, um, both external and, and Mimi's site is on that page, as well as other resources. The registry is there. If you have resources that you'd like us to add to that site, please send them to us. So we're trying to really um, put together all of the integrative communities um, input uh, and resources that we've all, we all have. So we have several partner organizations already on there. Um, the American uh, Nutrition Association, the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians, um, the, the AHNA, all of these organizations are putting out tremendous resources for the integrative community. So I suggest you guys start there or check inside of the member portal as well. Okay, so we had a couple of questions. Um, uh, oh, I, I did have one other um, just mm -hmm. question and comment. Um, so um, my my main insurance is through Kaiser, and so I had I had requested an antibody test, and they said that it was not for prime time at the acute phase. Antibody cross reacts with other coronaviruses, and so 
you know, one is that not everyone has access to the antibody tests. And I think that that is an area that, um, you know, the integrative community, um, if that's something we can help provide, it is not something that uh, those in the big systems can get yet. Um, so I don't know if you had any comments on that, Mimi, or um, yeah, I, I other think people also have had trouble even getting an antibody test. Um, Right, so I think at the end of the day, we have to have a government that makes all this testing for free, right? And like New York is going around testing and other places are really making an effort uh, to test. And that's the direction it has to go. And I think they finally realized this, uh, that we it can't, that's why we have a problem. We have health disparities, right? Somebody can walk into my center and spend 250 for a test. Uh, well, that's, a, that's almost a week's groceries for another family. Uh, so we have these huge health disparities that really are discouraging to me and um, it should be made available to everyone. And I, I think they keep saying things like, in the beginning they said, don't wear a face mask because they didn't want the face mask to be used up, right? Then they say, don't get an antibody test because they, don't, they can't provide them. So I'm not convinced that a lot of the recommendations we're getting are um, science-based uh, as opposed to um, we can't deliver, so we'll, we'll say what makes sense right now. And that's, that's, I know that may sound a little cynical, but that is an issue. Uh, just before we go, we do have a few other things. Someone is asking about zinc supplements. Uh, zinc is an antiviral. Uh, it is particularly helpful in those people who have the COVID loss of taste. Uh, and I have uh, my own cousin I treated with herbal tincture for COVID, confirmed COVID, and she lost her taste. And uh, it's come back now after two weeks of being on zinc. So I don't see an issue with zinc. Somebody's mentioning the ACE2. Uh, the latest research is showing that being on ACE inhibitors is probably protective, um, right? So uh, that's so I'm not touching that. I'm leaving people on their ACEs and ARBs. Someone's asking about amethyst biomats. Uh, you know, look, I don't think they're going to be harmful. Uh, they're certainly relaxing, and when you put the body into a state of relaxation, you you boost the immune system. So what boosts the immune system? Getting a good night's sleep, high dose phytonutrients in the diet, getting out and being in nature, um, you know, meditation, all of these things uh, boost the immune system. So not, you know, not having outbursts of anger and, you know, these are all the things that are good for immunity. So those are the things we should be doing. And, um, if somebody's asking now about copper deficiency with zinc, you can augment with a little bit of copper, but you're not gonna keep them on high dose zinc forever. And so I use 30 milligrams for the short run for protection uh, right now. Uh, so that's, that's, I think covers those areas. And um, the, uh, somebody asked for the mantra. It's not quite a mantra, it's a chant. Um, and uh, we can send it out, but it's own cream. Cream is calling in the support of the divine, divine feminine in the form of Kali. Uh, Kali is one of the great pr protectors. It's Kali and Durga, Mother Mary, uh, Guadalupe. These are all of our female, sacred female protectors. And the uh, chant is own cream maha kali calling in mother kali the the power of kali uh save rogam nasi 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 means sort of let's let's keep that away from me so it's own cream cream maha kali save rogam nasi nasi and I'm happy to share that. Uh, see some people were asking for it. Uh, so I, I think it's important that we put out to consciousness that we see the planet healed, that we see the earth healed, 
that we see that we manifest in our mind the world that we want to be in and that's a world of love and accepting of uh, our differences and recognizing our common humanity which is our home is planet earth the earth is our mother and our mother is getting healthier because we are all taking a Sabbath right now, one that we desperately needed. So we are all citizens of planet Earth and we all live and breathe the same air. And if we can just hold that, and the higher we raise our vibration, I firmly believe the less COVID-19 we're going to see. So I really wanna thank everyone for this time of coming together and thank the Academy uh, for bringing us all together. Thank you, Tappy. So I just wanna take a minute to thank you, Mimi, um, not only for being here today, um, you're you know super busy and seeing patients and doing all the things that you're doing right now, but for really leading the Academy as the founding president and for um, you know, being there for all of our community when, when we need you. Um, I just wanted to remind us that um, the, we are transitioning all our programs right now online, including our fall conference. Um, and back to Patty's question with the, um, you know, looking at the data that we know from the scientific community, likely the, there will be some sort of resurgence in the fall. And so we just think it's prudent. We have so many of our um, members are actually out there working on the front lines, a part of what's happening. Um, and so that has been one of the things we've done so that everyone can continue to meet in our community. And you know, we will be having an online conference. Um, so we'll let you all know about that. We're just in the planning stages of it now. Um, we have, we're providing lots of free CE. Um, we're doing these webinars, so hopefully on Monday, for those of you who can join um, at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time, we'll just do a short 15-minute kind of meditation or um, kind of just for the start of our day. Um, and then next Friday, uh, we'll have Mary Hardy as our guest speaker, and Mary is an integrative physician who will be really looking at the evidence, um, looking at some of the um, supportive uh, approaches that we take, and we're going to look really more deeply at those clinical considerations. Um, look to our website. We'll keep putting up resources there. Um, join in the private dis discussion group, um, and let's just really keep our integrative community together. Um, I can say that just for myself, um, having, seeing all of you come on has been such a source of support for me. For my family, my daughter Luna wants to actually do one of the meditations on a Monday. She's been inspired by everyone. So please get creative. It, let us know how we can support you, what more we can do to help you um, through these uh, at times. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. So thanks everyone for coming. Um, if you want to see these, these are all live streamed. So you can go to our YouTube page. Um, they're live streamed on Facebook and they'll be also on our website. So if you want to come back and re-watch one of the webinars or, if, you know, you can't make one, you can always go and watch it afterwards. So thanks to everyone. Thanks to our community. And um, maybe, Mimi, you'd be willing to just kind of close us out with a um, moment of meditation or breathing or anything that you're moved to. Well, thank you. And we, we started with a prayer. And I think it's worth saying one more time, because remember, our, our vision in the academy is the connectedness between planetary health and human health. And, and we firmly believe that the biggest healer and the greatest healer is love. So where we started, we will end. That we are one humanity on this planet. All life, all life is interconnected and interdependent. We all rely on one another. We all share in the universal bond of love. 
and let us continue to be the universal bond of love. Love begins with self-acceptance. I want everyone to know that they are perfect just the way they are. And forgiveness, forgiveness of oneself, forgiveness of those things which bind us to emotions that are not healing. With respect and compassion, we truly embrace diversity. We don't all look the same, but if we peel away our layer of skin, the human body looks remarkably the same. Together we make a difference through love. And if this could be our mantra for today, love and peace begins with me. Love and peace begins with me. Love and peace begins with me. Om Namo Narayani. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Guaneri. And we will see you all on Monday. Thanks for coming in from all over the world and blessings to all of our community. Thank you.